Good Saturday evening, everybody. Meteorologist Hunter Forrest here. Welcome to the special edition of Hurricane Hub live on this beautiful Saturday evening here. Now, normally the show is Monday through Friday at uh, 8 o'clock in the evening, but on the weekends, you know, when there's something to talk about, we're going to go ahead and talk about it on Hurricane Hub Live, and that's exactly what we're going to do this evening. We have two areas out there in the Atlantic that we're tracking right now, but one specifically that we are really playing, paying close attention to. Now, you'll notice this area here in yellow. This has been on the map for the last couple of days, for the last week or so. It had a 60% chance of developing at some point, but now it's only down to a 20% chance. And if it does develop, which likely if it does, it won't be much, but it will just move off into the middle of the Atlantic. Not much to worry about with this system here. So check, that's the good news. But now there's this area here, this tropical wave just came off the coast of Africa, and this is something worth watching over the next week and even into the next two weeks. Now it's very far away, but the National Hurricane Center already saying about a 50% chance of developing within the next week or so. I'm sure this number will go up over the next couple of days, but we're already seeing some convection out there over the uh, off the coast of uh, Africa right now. And as we take a look at, you know, the days to reach the United States, you know, we have plenty of time to watch this. You know, you see that orange X just near the coast of Senegal. Well, you know, that's about two weeks away if it was to approach the United States. So over the next couple of days, models are going to shift, models are going to change. But for right now, what we do know is that likely we'll see our next tropical system developing, our next name system, over the next couple of days. And it's likely it's going to continue westward towards the Caribbean, anywhere between, you know, Bermuda or the Caribbean. So just something to watch over the next couple of days. And this is exactly the area where we'll, we're, we typically see development during this time during the hurricane season. Right now it is August 9th. So we start to see an uptick in activity. The peak of the season is September 10th. And normally during this time, especially heading into September, we see tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa in the main development region. And we get to uh, you know, experience these storms that just take forever and ever and ever to move across the ocean. But that's the good thing is that we have plenty of time to watch them as they develop and grow and the model shift and change and we have time to kind of, you know, figure out what's going on with these systems. So this is the area out there that has the 20% chance of development. Not a whole bunch going on with that, but as we take a look at the tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa, seeing some, you know, um, convection developing with this system, disorganized thunderstorms, nothing, you know, too significant right now, but the environment becomes a bit more favorable for development over the next couple of days. You have warm water looking like we'll see, you know, less Saharan dust, which can choke some of these storms and not allow them to develop. But over the next couple of days, looking like we'll see a little bit less of that and a little bit of, you know, some broad spin with this area. So, of course, you know, we have plenty of time to watch this, but this is the area it's in and plenty of warm water here. Temperatures are in, you know, the lower 80s in this area. And as we continue westward, the water gets even warmer as we get towards, you know, Florida. The ocean temperatures are in the mid to upper. 80s, maybe even a few, you know, lower 90s, closer, closer to the coast, but just warm water throughout the main development region into this area here from Jacksonville down into Miami and San Juan, warm water temperatures. And that's exactly what tropical systems need uh, to grow and become stronger. But what they don't need is the Saharan dust. And this has been, you know, limiting uh, formation and so with some of these storms over the last couple of weeks and it could just choke off these systems, not allow them to develop. But as we get into the next couple of days, this is where that area is, uh, that tropical wave. And you'll notice over the next few days, maybe a little bit of Saharan dust coming off. But by Wednesday would be, you know, around this area here. And so there's not a whole bunch of dust, of Saharan dust. And even by the time we get into next Saturday, where it could be in this region, you'll notice there's not a whole bunch of Saharan dust in this area. So that could allow it to, you know, grow and get even stronger with those warm waters and less Saharan dust. So that's part of the reason why, 
you know, these models are saying that this system, you know, could definitely become a tropical storm and a hurricane, but we have plenty of time again to continue watching this. At least, you know, within the next week, it's going to take at least a week for it to move across portions of the Atlantic. But this is what the spaghetti plot is saying. These are just, you know, different models saying that this area here is likely gonna go westward over the next couple of days. Now, this is Wednesday. We're in the middle of the ocean. It's the middle of the work week. We have nothing to worry about here. But by the time we get into next weekend, this is next Saturday, we likely will have, you know, a tropical storm, likely a hurricane at this point, but where we have a 900 mile spread with these models anywhere from Bermuda down towards Puerto Rico. So we likely will have our next name system somewhere in this region over the next week or so. How strong will it be? That really is still in question right now, but could it be a hurricane? Certainly there is that possibility and rather a high possibility. A lot of the models are saying it'll grow and grow and get stronger and stronger over the next week or so and likely will become our next name storm and our first hurricane of the season. Let's look at the American and European model over the next week or so. The European model and American model continue pushing it westward over the next couple of days. As we get into next weekend, this is next Saturday. What you'll notice is, is that they're in fairly good agreement for being a week out with a system that, you know, isn't really organized yet. Normally you don't see that. Normally, you know, you'll see the European all the way over here, the American all the way over here, uh, when they're first, you know, starting to understand what's going on with, you know, an invest or a tropical wave, because there's no closed circulation yet for the models to really hone in on. So it's harder you know, to understand where it's going to go. And you look at the trends and of course the trends have been saying it's going to get stronger and move west. And when you have two models here, like the American and European, a week out fairly close together, it gives you, you know, a better, gives you a better confidence that, you know, this is, you know, a higher likely uh, case that this is what's going to happen, that we'll see, you know, a hurricane or a tropical storm moving west anywhere between Bermuda and the Caribbean next weekend. How strong again will it be is, of course, still, we have still plenty of time to watch and see, you know, how strong it will get, but certainly could see a hurricane by next weekend uh, in this area. But where it goes after that is the million dollar question. It depends on the high in the Atlantic. How strong will it be? How weak will it be? Is there going to be a cold front coming off? the uh, East Coast, all of these factors will determine where the system will go. Now, of the reason why we're on here tonight is that, you know, nobody knows for certain, you know, when this develops over the next week or so, and then within the next two weeks, where the storm will go. Will it curve off to sea? That is a likely scenario. Could it hit anywhere along the East Coast? That's also a possibility. Less Likely is that it moves into the Gulf. Still a chance that could happen, but for right now, a lot of the models are trending to more of a curve as we get towards next weekend. And then the weekend after that, or even a few days before, um, it could be, you know, pretty much anywhere, pretty anywhere in this vicinity. So no one knows for sure where the system will go, it all really depends on uh, some of these factors out there in the atmosphere. But again, these are some of the typical scenarios that when you see a system in this general area in the ocean, it could either go towards the East Coast or curve out to sea or off towards the Gulf. But I think these two scenarios are the most likely with this system. But you'll see people posting being like, oh, a major hurricane is going to be hitting this area on August 22nd. And that's just one model run. You can't go off one model run that far out. It's going to change and it's going to be wrong. You just have to look at the trends. And that's exactly what we're doing here. The trends are a growing system over the next week or so, likely to become a depression within the next few days, a tropical storm, and then likely a hurricane by, you know, next weekend and likely that would be in this general area. But then after that, 
those trends get even more broad and you just kind of have to go by history that it could be, you know, kind of one of these scenarios. So anywhere from Maine, so New England, down the East Coast, into Florida, even in the Gulf Coast, has to pay attention to this system. It's just one of those you have to watch. The good news is time is on our side. It is so, so far away, hundreds and over thousands of miles away. We have a good, you know, 12, 13 days to continue to watch the system. I mean, even within the next week, it's still hundreds of miles off the East Coast. So again, plenty of time, nothing to worry about with this system. For all it could do is move right out to the open water and become a fish storm. That would be best case scenario. But of course, you know, things shift and change and the models are going to continue to do that over the next couple of days. So it's just, you know, one of these times during the season where you want to check in, you know, every couple of days, maybe every day to see what the updates are with the system. And that's why we're here. We're going to continue to keep you updated. We'll be here back again tomorrow, of course, for Hurricane Hub Live to give you more information on this. But we're going to end it on, you know, a good note. Um, Next graphic after this will be the, um, the trivia, which is a good one tonight. But if we do see our next name system, name is Aaron. We've already had Andrea, Barry, Chantel, and Dexter, but Aaron's the next one on the list, and then Fernand. And Aaron could be our first, our first hurricane of the season. All right, here's a look at Hurricane Hub Live Tropical Trivia. Which was the longest traveled hurricane on record? There's Hurricane Alberto from 1994. There is Hurricane Connie from 1955. Hurricane John from 1994. And most recently, we Hurricane Barrel back in 2024. You guys might remember that one. That was a historic storm. But think about that. I'll have the answer for you tomorrow, Sunday, because we'll be back here again at 8 o'clock Sunday evening. But if you want to scan the QR code to download the 13 News Now Hurricane Guide, it has information on supplies you should have on hand, emergency numbers you might need, and a lot more. Make sure to join us here for Hurricane Hub Live every weekday at 8 o'clock. I'll be here again tomorrow. Have a great rest of your evening.